I want to thank you all for being patient with us on today. Today we stand here in the midst of the saltwater waves of Sapelo Island on the spurs of the giants of the shoulders that we stand on. And as we are standing here today, we're standing uh, as a coalition of people that care. We are the Georgia Legislative Black Caucus, the largest black caucus in the world, assembled with members also of the African diaspora, members of the Sapelo community, and one of the greatest legal teams uh, that ever lived in reference, you'll hear about that shortly, from these great minds. But today we're here for compassion to say that we offer our condolences to the families that lost loved ones. Seven individuals lost their lives. And you can't just say black lives, white lives, you gotta say all lives matter. And so on today, we're here to signal the alarm and blow the shofar that it's more than what has happened is so unfortunate. There are other individuals that will always be changed for the rest of their lives. Uh, counseling is needed, uh, compassion is needed, and the full attention is needed to Sapelo Island. Um, the questions that are arising on today are a lot of parables that we want to find out what we can do to hear from the people of Sapelo Island. And once and for all, to put the national spotlight mm. on a place of Gullah Geechee heritage, food segues, dialogue, uh, everything that deals with their everyday lifestyle. It is time that the nation focus their eyes on Sapelo. Right. And so today, we're here to see about the children of Sapelo. Right. Right. We're here to put our arms around them, to embrace them, and to hear from them. But more importantly, we're here to say to the state of Georgia, which we are a part of, mm -hmm. is that you got to, Dr. King said, whatever you, whatever you uh, do on paper, make sure that it's, it's true on paper. Mm -hmm. And so with that, there are some questions about the infrastructure, about what could have been prevented, and what we can do moving forward to do right by Sapelo Island. Um, we know that, we just make it plain as the crackling cornbread that rises from Sapelo, that the individuals that are interested in taking property and all the above. You can't take away the lifestyle of something that is internal. And so today, we are here uh, to, to find out, not only offering our prayers and condolences, because prayers without works is dead. And so we want to see what we can do moving forward. As you have legislators here, senators and state representatives, and uh, brilliant minds, we got to come to the table to find out what we can do. When, when there's an emergency in South Florida, what do we do? What's the plan? Hmm. There are resources that surpass just counseling. What financial resources are available? What communications are available? What are we going to do to maintain that this will never happen again? Mm -hmm. This is an atrocity. Yes, yes it is. And through the state of Georgia, it's an audacity. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That we have got to do something. So we're going to be reaching out to the governor of Georgia, to the commissioner of the Department of Natural Resources. Yes. And we're going, to be, we're going to be reaching out because we have the right to reach out because we are part of that. And if, I've learned as I close, if you're not a part of the solution, then you are truly a part of the problem. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we don't want to be a part of the problem to the people of Sapelo. So today, uh, we once again, we have members also from the legal minds of uh, the attorney, Chad Mansk, who is also the president of the NWCP of Savannah. We're going to have him come, the brilliant minds of attorney, Francis Johnson and Attorney Miles are here. Uh, Attorney Ben Crump is not here, but he is a part of the team. So we're going to bring uh, Attorney Chad Mance to come up and just give us a few insights. They have been here on the ground. So we're going to welcome them at this time. Good evening. I'm Francis Johnson, F-R-A-N-C-Y-S. I am partner with the Davis Bozeman Johnson Law Firm. We are here today with Ben Crump Law and Chad Mance Law as representatives of the injured and deceased. Uh, what happened here at Sapelo is a tragedy. And on behalf of Ben Crump and Chad Mance and the lawyers of Davis Bozeman Johnson, including Maoli Davis, who's with me today, we extend our deepest condolences. And our firms, Ben Crump Law, Chad Mance Law, 
and Davis Bozeman Johnson are often called upon when tragedy visits our community uh, to get the questions answered uh, that deserve to be answered. And one of the questions that remain in my mind as I've gone over and visited and talked with uh, the residents of Hog Hammock on Sapelo, that this island is maintained and the ferry service is operated and that gangway is maintained by the Department of Natural Resources. What happened? And why were the invited guests of the Sapelo uh, community to this cultural festival day uh, not safe? in crossing that gangway. And those are questions that we are determined uh, to get answers for. Make no mistake about it, there is a long history of self-determination of the people of Hog Hammock and Sapelo Island and the people of this community that stretches back more than 236 years. I call the name of Tunis Campbell. Yes. Yes. As these elected officials today gather, he was one of the first elected officials from this area. And Tunis Campbell and those uh, black residents who just up from slavery following the Civil War determined that they would be free people in these islands and maintain not just Sapelo Island but seven other barrier islands, most of the islands from Savannah to uh, Jacksonville. And so in the spirit of Tunis Campbell, who organized, who fought, who led, who was elected, who represented his people, we're very proud to do so on behalf of Ben Crump, on behalf of Chad Mance Law, and uh, the attorneys uh, that make up Davis Bozeman Johnson uh, Law, the largest African American firm in the state. And so we um, are here on behalf of those aggrieved parties. My partner, Molly Davis, who has often been called as a part of our firm to hold state actors accountable when they do not discharge their duties consistent with the Constitution. That's a constitutional tort. It should speak about how precious and sacred this space is for those of us who come and the work that we do to defend the constitutional rights of all of Americans. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Mauli, M-A-W-U-L-I Davis of the Davis Bozeman Johnson Law Firm. And again, we are here. We went over to investigate because as a community-based law firm, we wanted to sit with our people. We wanted to go to the land. We wanted to see where this happened. We wanted to hear. And what we heard and what we're clear about is there was great trauma still that has not been addressed. And so we call on the state to address what our people are going through, what they're experiencing. They are hurting. They are in pain to have to do what they did to try to save the lives that they saved. Heroic efforts is all that we heard about, the, the difficulty in trying to make sure that lives were saved on this tragic day. And so our work here is about collaboration. We are proud to be able to work in collaboration with other lawyers uh, being based here uh, in southeast Georgia, out of Statesboro, Savannah, um, we come here with the understanding that when I was a law student, I came first to Sapelo Island as mm. a part of the African American Studies Department at Georgia State University as a graduate research assistant. So I came here. I got to sit and learn from the giants who are now ancestors, who I know are watching over us, that great cloud of witnesses mm. who are mm. saying that justice must be served, yeah. that yeah. these families yeah. must have voice, and yeah. that we're here to give them that voice. And yeah. so we're grateful for these courageous elected officials who would not shirk their duty, would not turn and run away, but instead came here, travel here to stand shoulder to shoulder with the people of this island, with the people of this community saying, not ever again. Not ever again. Not ever again because we know that, unfortunately, this community has been uh, neglected, disenfranchised, <laughs> targeted. This is what we do all the time. We deal with the targeting of communities and of individuals and fight for their civil rights. And so that fight has already begun with our investigation and will continue to do that in collaboration with these elected officials. 
as well as with the community members who are standing uh, strong and proud. And they remain, again, they remain a spiritual people. And so we just want to keep lifting them up in prayer because of what they're going through after witnessing and experiencing this trauma. And with that, we look forward to the work uh, ahead. Thank you all. Attorney Chad Matz. Okay. So at this time, because we want to spend time with the families, we're going to open up for uh, questions or anything we can answer any questions to. Well, you, uh, it, it, the, the first thing, let me say the six of them, uh, you, you have one that was a, a state employee. Mm -hmm. And let me say this, the issue is not about how many were Gullah Geechee, there were lives that were lost. Right. Mm -hmm. And so even, it's the people, it's the, mm -hmm. if someone died on your premise, mm -hmm. you would be affected. So it's, it's the, the whole community has been affected, whether they are black or white, That's right. um, whether they are state or non-residents, um, the issue is that we lost seven lives. Well, you, you got boots on the ground here today, and one I understand that you were the gentleman. Yeah. Um, we're here to hear from them because uh, we've got you got some very influential people in here. Uh, this lady that sits here is the chairwoman of, in the Senate of Urban Affairs. She's getting ready to do a, a a hearing, a committee to ask the lieutenant governor. So we want to get the information so we can go back and sit with the commissioner and even sit with the governor. I, I'm on appropriation, so let's appropriate some money That's right. to, uh, to help the situation. Um, so the, the, the whole thing about what happened, my brother, it's unfortunate. Um, it is a neglect on the state that we should have taken uh, heed to it, and that's why we're here today. So there's a larger narrative, and let's just be clear that this investment in black and brown communities and particularly endangered communities like Sapelo is uh, is chronicle and everyone here knows that mm -hmm. and so we are very clear about the history of this place and what we're also clear about is that there is an active and ongoing investigation as to the cause of the collapse of that gangway that's a part of our private investigation as lawyers on behalf of the injured and deceased but that is also a part of the public duty of these elected officials it is a part of the responsibility of every person of goodwill. Uh, my first trip to Sapelo was not at the uh, heat of this tragedy. I came to Sapelo for the first time in 1995 to the first cultural festival they held on this island. And I brought my own family back time and time again. The only way to get onto this island is by the causeway maintained uh, and the dock apparatus maintained by the Department of Natural Resources. That is a clear and present threat to every person who visits this island. And so it should be of concern to every citizen because this is a part of the bountiful blessings of what it means to be a Georgian, these golden coasts uh, here in this golden isle. So that's a part of our investigation. We're not here to point fingers. We are here to find solutions. And we invite these elected officials as well as those who are responsible for the Department of Natural Resources, Department of Community Affairs, and the governor's office to help us find solutions to finally address the disinvestment in Sapelo Island. So, so, a, so our understanding is that the state is conducting their own investigation, and that is appropriate, that the GBI, in co coordination with the Department of Natural Resources, the State Patrol, and other state-based uh, investigatory agencies are doing their due diligence. Make no mistake about it, Davis, Bozeman, Johnson Law, Ch Chad Mance Law, and Ben Crump Law will do our due diligence as well, because it is in many instances 
where the state has failed to take action to appropriate funds and resources, that the state is not the very best actor to be investigating itself. So lawyers in the public interest, like Ben Crump Law, Chad Mance Law, and Davis Bozeman Johnson Law are here to do that. The reason why I continue to emphasize this collaboration is because this is unprecedented in what we do. We have made a determination to come together to represent those parties injured who are from Florida and from Georgia and to work in collaboration with people of goodwill, elected officials and otherwise, as well as the organizations that have been beating the drum about Sapelo for decades to do what is necessary to find solutions to this problem. And with that, because we do have great leaders that are here right now, Brother Hall is going to come up briefly and just uh, make his uh, statement, and then we're going to get ready to close out so we can see those families and get on the ferry. My name is Reginald Hall, R-E-G-I-N-A-L-D-H-A-L-L. -L. Say your name. My name is J.R. Grovener, J-R-G-R-O-V-N-E-R. We are appreciative of all of you being here. What we like to do in the beginning of this tragedy we've learned for the last two days is pay homage to the ancestors that have been mm -hmm. tragically lost with this tragic event. So our hearts go out to our people and our guests. We want to make sure that it's understood, as the attorney said to my right, this needs to be some form of a federal investigation, if I heard that correctly. Again, you can't police yourself. We have fought the state for 15 years, JR, myself, and 30 to 50 to 60 other of my family members with paperwork that showed non-compliance. The only reason this doc is new in the first place is because of a federal lawsuit. We've had lawyers, as well as these lawyers now joining us, that have been with us for 10 years from Realm and Colfax, and Reed Colfax decided he's not going to leave our side. That is almost a $50 million change in 10 years with these type of legal minds that can come along and say, stop. Doing business as usual is over. You asked me about the, you, you made a statement about the safety of the ramp. I did, I reported that about three to four months ago. Also this past week, one of my family members, which is an employee by the state of Georgia, he's afraid of losing, losing his job. He made a complaint that the ramp cracked at the, where it connects to the dock. Mm -hmm. But see, that's the stuff that go on with the state of Georgia. They threaten people with jobs and stuff like that on Sapelo. And that's why, this, for instance, right over there by that building, the blankets are still over there that they brought the bodies off the island and they're still sitting over there. That's a hazardous. The state of Georgia don't care about our Sapelo people. Right. And we've been trying to get the state involved, get the GBI involved for an investigation, but the sheriff got to call in the investigation from the GBI. And who's the sheriff? The people that we sued in the lawsuit, McIntosh County. That's why I said we need a federal lawsuit. We need to go higher than the state government. We need the feds to investigate. The last thing I'll say is our goal is equity, services, and our taxes to be represented properly. We've been abused and paying to be abused through our taxes, and we have it on record for 51 years. That's the only reason the county settled the lawsuit for $2 million cash and $14 million injunctive relief. But the problem is, on a federal lawsuit, they did not comply with the lawsuit and put the helipad in. So now yesterday, was 10 times as hazardous dealing with flying helicopters, I'm sorry, Saturday. We're dealing with flying helicopters with hog holes and grass up to your knees, expecting a safe triage recovery. We need the assistance of these legislators, as many of them have been next to our side for almost 12 years, trying to figure out when does it happen that these legislators are listened to by the state and the highest of the governor's office to say we need to change this. We don't want to fight. We're not a fighting people, but we fight. And it's a model that can be created for the Gullah Geechee lands across the southeast coast in this four state corridor that's now federally protected as a federally 
protected class of people under the United States government. We're still American citizens. Let me say this as we close. I sponsor the legislation, House Resolution 625, the Gullah Geechee Society, yes, sir. to protect the up, up and down the corridors of Georgia, the culture, and all that is connected to Gullah Geechee. Um, and so we're going to be here for the long haul. Our mission is not impossible. It is solutions. Yes. So we're going to move from what it is to what ought to be. Thank you all so much for your time. And now we need to see the families.